Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing great. I'm F. Merlin Rodriguez and today we are going to do the part 3 of our unit Writing for Professional Purpose 2. In this session, we will be learning how to write an email. Emails are by far the most common method of communication for internal office correspondence and they have nearly replaced letters in all but the most formal business situations. Most people in companies use emails for a wide range of purposes to confirm appointments and meetings, request help or action, provide information, etc. Now let's see how to write a formal email. First, we have to begin with a greeting. Always open your email with a greeting such as Dear Linen. If your relationship with the reader is formal, use their family name. For example, Dear Mr. George. If the relationship is more casual, you can simply say Hi. And the next point to remember is to thank the recipient. If someone has replied to one of your emails, be sure to say Thank you for your prompt reply or Thanks for getting back to me. Thanking the reader puts him or her at ease and it will make you appear more polite. Next, state your purpose. If you are starting the email communication, it may be impossible to include a line of thanks. Instead, begin by stating your purpose. For example, I am writing to enquire about or I am writing in reference to. Make your purpose clear early on in the mail and then move into the main text of your email. Remember, people want to read emails quick, so keep your sentences short and clear. You will also need to pay careful attention to grammar, spelling and punctuation so that you present a professional image of yourself and your company. At the end, add your closing remarks and end with a closing. You can usually end by saying best wishes or thanks or thanks and regards or just kind regards etc. Now let's take a look at the steps that we have to keep in mind while writing a professional emails. The first thing is to identify your goal. Before you write an email, ask yourself what you want the recipient to do after they have read it. Once you have determined the purpose of your email, you can ensure everything you include in your message supports this action. For example, if you want the recipient to review a report you have attached, let them know what the report is, why you need them to review it, what sort of feedback you need, and when you need the task completed. The next step that you have to keep in mind is to consider your audience. When you compose an email message, make sure your tone matches your audience. For example, if you are emailing a business executive you have never met, keep the email polished and free of any jokes or informalities. On the other hand, if you are emailing a colleague with whom you have a good relationship, you might use a less formal, more friendly approach. The third thing that we have to keep in mind while we write a professional mail is to keep it concise. Your audience might have little time to read through your email. So make it as brief as possible without leaving out key information. Try not to address too many subjects at once as this can make your message lengthy, challenging to read and difficult to take action on. When editing your email, take out any information that's irrelevant to the topic you are addressing. Use short, simple sentences by removing filler words. 
The fourth and the important step is to proofread your email. An error-free email demonstrates diligence and professionalism. Before you send an email, take a moment to check for any spelling, grammar or syntax error. Now moving on to the fifth step, use proper etiquette. Include a courteous greeting and closing to sound friendly and polite. Additionally, be considerate of the recipient and their time. For example, unless it's an emergency, avoid emailing a contact asking for something after short hours or while they are on leave. The sixth step is to remember to follow up. Most people receive several emails per day, so they might miss or forget to respond your message. If the recipient hasn't replied within two working days, consider reaching back with a friendly follow-up mail. Now let's take a look at the format or the structure of formal email. The first is the subject line. This is a short phrase that summarizes the reason for your message or the goal of your communication. It is important to include a subject line when sending a professional email so your audience know exactly what to expect and is able to locate the message easily if needed. This is the subject line where it should be short and should be written with the relevant words. Therefore, the audience will or the receiver will read the mail. The second important point is the salutation. This is the first line of your email and generally acts as a greeting. So it can either start with hi or dear according to the person. Then we move on to the body of the letter. Just like the body of uh, any letter, this is where you will share your full message. Here you will make sure that it is concise as possible, not lengthy and you will avoid using emoticons that is pictures like this because a professional emails will not contain those pictures. Carefully check for spelling or grammar and make sure the font size is readable. After the body you have to write the closing sentence and then the signature. Closing sentence is asking the recipient to message back or for uh, looking for a speedy response. And then you will give your signature. In this video, we learned how to write an email and what are the things that we have to keep in mind while writing a mail and the six steps that we have to follow and at the end, we saw the format of an email. Hope you understood this session. Thank you, children.